Hi! Welcome to my Awakening Valkyrie guide. Now that I've played Valkyrie for almost two years, I so thoroughly enjoy playing it. If we're just getting started or a seasoned player like me, on January the 10th, Valkyrie and many other classes got a revamp with some significant changes. In this guide, we'll be covering a handful of topics I find important for Valkyrie. We have timestamps included if you're only interested in certain segments in the description. This is a general guide intended for new and experienced console Valkyrie players alike. Please be open-minded since these are my opinions and personal experiences that I'd like to share with you. If anything, you can take what I say and adapt it to your own playstyle if you find or now understand something when watching my guide. Here are my stats. Ideally, you should increase your casting speed and movement speed to plus 5. Without those two stats, you're going to attack and move slowly. As a Valkyrie, I don't prioritize critical hits since we have skills like Sacrum in Awakening and Celestial Spear in Pre-Awakening. The cooldowns are short and they provide passes with 80% critical rate for 5 seconds. With drafts and add-ons, we can achieve 100% critical rate on all our skills fairly easily. For Valkyrie, DR is the best route for you. I have two different sets. The armors, main hand, and awakening weapons stay the same, but my offhand and my earrings change with my setups. With that being said, for my armors, I have a griffin for my helmet. For my armor, I have a dimtru. For my gloves, I have bags. And for my boots, I have ergons. For my weapons, my awakening is a dandu and my main hand is a black star. With my PvE setup, whenever farming an area, it's best to use Kudum if we can hit the recommended AP with it. I have distortions for my earrings, but Tungred earrings come at a more affordable price point. Additionally, I have a Tep black star for my main hand, mainly because I PvP more often in Awakening. Also, it's great for PvE because of the monster damage you receive over Zarka. For my rings, I have Eye of the Ruins, and my belt is a Voltara. Both have HP passives that can help increase your block gauge. For my necklace, I have a Layton, but you can also have an Ogre or a Panka Potion necklace because it offers the same stats as a Set Layton or an Ogre. Now here's my PvP setup. Nuver is always a better choice than Kudum for Valkyrie. If you're debating whether to Saga your Gamarth Heart on Nuver or Kudum, choose Nuver if you play other classes that benefit from DR more. In NA, it's all about stacking UP and blowing things up. My preferred meta is EUs, where UP is valued more to achieve 400 DP. By running two pen Narc earrings instead of two distortions for my earrings, I can still kill efficiently with 288, 298 UP, and 363 while not being as squishy. Now for my crystals on my Valkyrie. On the left hand side is my PvE setup, and on the right hand side is my PvP setup. The only change is the crystals on my offhand. On my main hand, I have two Elkars. On my offhand, I have two Corrupts for my Kudum, and I have two Rebellious on my Uber. On my helmet, I have two Han Hooms. On my armor, I have two Bond Kabilis, but you should consider running special evasion ray crystals if you poo 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 more often than poo poo poo. Those crystals are the best in slot, especially if you have a Fury Nuver or Kuda. On my gloves, I have Gen Vipers. These are the best in slot crystals and a must in my opinion. On my boots, I have Han Humes giving me the four crystal set effect. A full set effect adds bonus stats. When socketing a crystal on your Pro Shop outfit, your best option is the Ancient Swiftness Crystal, which gives you plus two on movement speed. For skills, I'll be covering what you should get for PvE and PvP. For skill builds that are catered to how many skill points you may have, check out the Valkyrie Discord. For forward slash, I lock this skill since it gets in the way of movement rotations I do, and since we're capped in FPS, it's not that reliable in combos. 
You can lock Charging Slash. You can leave Sideways Cut at ranked 1 or max it out all the way. You can lock Stabbering Light. You can lock Glaring Slash. Max SO2 up to rank 4. Max out Sharp Light, including the Ultimate and Absolute versions. Max out Divine Power, including the Ultimate and Absolute versions. Max out Heaven's Echo, including the Absolute version. Max out Celestial Spear, including the Ultimate and Absolute versions. Max out JOL, including the Absolute version. Max out Righteous Charge, including the Ultimate and Absolute versions. Max out Shining Dash, including the Absolute version. Max out Breath of Elyon, including the Absolute version. You can lock Flurry of Kicks. You can lock Flying Kick. Max out Punishment, including the Ultimate and Absolute versions. Max out Counter, including the Absolute version. You can lock Shield Strike. And don't learn Shield Counter and Shield Push. Max out Shield Throw, including the Flow and Absolute versions. Max out Just Counter, including the Flow and Absolute version. You can max out, lock, or not even get Skyward Strike. It's more of a stylish skill for combat. Get all your shield chases. Block Vow of Trust, unless you need the S clue. Block Evasion. Max out your PA Alien's Blessing and all your passives. For your Awakening skills, max out everything since they are all useful. For your level 56 for bombs, Celestial Smite is great for common potential or another CC. It acts like Celestial Spear but with a higher cooldown. It has a bound, 30% movement speed boo buff, and magical plus 15 boo boo buff on hit for 10 seconds. Since it's only through hotbar, we can't do smooth transitions like Celestial Spear and combos. Celestial Cry is a great choice if you like the extra heal, magical boo boo, movement speed, boo boo, and accuracy buff for yourself and allies. It will not override the accuracy buff you get from Absolute Heaven's Echo, since it gets 15% accuracy, while Celestial Cry gives 12%. For your level 57 Rob Bombs, Divine Slam was my favorite due to the reset combo potential, but they nerfed it, making it have a one hit down smash chance. Even so, it serves as a good transition to pre awakening if you're in awakening. The cooldown is low, it has a frontal guard and a 6% accuracy buff for 10 seconds. It will not overwrite Absolute Heaven's Echo or Celestial Cry's accuracy buff if one of those are active. Divine Crescent gives a plus 10 PP buff and special attacks, in other words, air, down, critical, and back attack, plus 5% extra damage for 10 seconds for yourself and allies. Using this before you engage in a fight or use your 100% BSR is very helpful. Compared to Divine Slam, the essay is short and has a longer cooldown. For your level 58 Rebombs, Divine Judgment of Light's damage is lackluster, unprotected, and more of a stylish skill to lose in a combo. Shining Judgment of Light is great for PvE since it pulls mobs towards you. Now onto my hot bar. My first skill is just counter. My second skill is Onslaught. My third skill is Hasu. My fourth skill is Divine Crescent. 
My fifth skill is Susan Fluxen. My sixth skill is Elian's Blessing. My last skill is Celestial Smite. On my hotbar wheel, I have my e buff, Noble Spirit, and Shining Dash. Now for Lusum, in order to proc it and do the damage with the CC, you have to do the entire animation of Sacrum. But if you hotbar it instead, it will proc Lusum right away versus doing Sacrum into Lusum. For my skill add-ons, I'll be showing you my PvE and PvP skill add-ons. Keep in mind that these are catered to my playstyle. These are my PvE skill add-ons. The six skills I chose are Purification, Cassie, Verdict, Onslaught, or Float Divina, and Terra. These are my PvP skill add-ons. I have two different sets. The first one is with Core Cassie. And the second one is with Core Onslaught. The six skills I chose from either one are the skills I'll be using the most in my combos or for CC catches. Now let's go over some tips and tricks for Awakening. You would normally have to blue and pre awakening guard or perform a certain prerequisite skill to proc just counter and pre awakening. For instance, Shield Chase just counter. If used from your hotbar while I'm pre-awakening, you can proc it instantly without performing a prerequisite skill. Since the CC is a stiff with the frontal guard, it's a great CC catch. In Awakening, after doing certain skills into Promptness, if your guard cancel into Terra Sancta, it will cast faster. On the top hand side, it's with guard cancel, and the bottom hand side is without guard cancel. For example, Deathlight Chase, Promptness, Guard, Terra Sancta. Celestial Smite is great in Awakening since it cancels smoothly with Promptness on console. When done correctly, you can Celestial Smite cancel into Promptness to avoid the bounce AC from Celestial Smite, but get the critical rate buff. I advise doing this cancel after landing your grab in a combo if you plan on using it. Lancia Training's movement speed buff is crucial. Make it a habit to keep this buff up at all times. It gives a 20% movement speed buff for 10 seconds. With these inputs, you can cancel the animation of Lancia Training and get the movement speed buff. This is also our awakening iframe. Despite being unreliable, with the right timing, we can dodge these healers and damage. Divinia Pulsa has three stab animations, but its cancels into Divinia proc the last two hits. Two examples of this are Blitz Stab Divinia and Hasty Divinia. On my hotbar wheel, I have Shining Dash, which is great since it can be used in Awakening Stance. It's also good for closing some gaps against ranked classes for PvP. When you're in pre-awakening, you can onset from your hotbar to instantly transition into Awakening without having to do a prerequisite skill. Onslaught can also linger its SA up until the Lancia hits the ground. If you use Hasty from your hotbar, you won't have to worry about the small gap it has at the start of its wind of animation. Hasu can also linger its SA until the Lancia hits the ground. Propness and Purification can flow together seamlessly. It's great for Sacrum's flow or Loose and Fluxen's KD CC, since after those CCs, you can follow up with Propness into Purification. The fact that Promptness and Purification have air attack modifiers make it the perfect filler damage in those circumstances. Heaven's Echo can be used to aggro mobs even if it's on cooldown. Blitz Stab flows really well after casting Hasty. You can even linger the SA and Hasty and have it flow with Blitz Stab smoothly. 
This is great from Blitzdab since the range is nice and you're able to go back to your block quickly. Breath of Elyon has a 3 second essay after using the skill in Awakening to yourself and allies. Take advantage of this and use your unprotected CCs for catches or combos. There's two ways I guard cancel to get Zachram's critical rate buff. The first one is by doing these inputs. And the second one is by doing the first set of Zachram, guard. Both methods will give you the critical rate buff for 5 seconds from Zachram without being unprotected for too long. This is also helpful before engaging with Onslaught. You can transition from Awakening to Pre-Awakening with Divine Power Guard, moving your analog stick left or right into Shield Chase, and two Deathlike Chases backwards into Shield Chase. The last two put you in guard without having to press the input for it. I'll be showing you skills that I use. Feel free to use them or mix them around and make your own. With reworks, there's no bread and butter Valkyrie PvE combo. Your combos should be tailored to your add-ons for efficiency and maximum damage. You can also change depending on what area you are farming. Your buffs are Divine Crescent, Noble Spirit, Onslar, Heaven Echo, the First of the Sacrum, and Celestial Spear. Your debuffs are Purification and Wave of Light. the Onslaught combo I use. It's really great because all the skills flow really well with each other and it does a lot of damage. mobs left over, I finish them off with filler skills, which are Blitz, Divina, Casty, and Hasty. Combo these four skills to your liking. You can even use these skills at the start of the next mob pack if your Onslaught combo is still on cooldown. Now that our cooldowns are significantly reduced, Shield Throw should be a last resort. PvP combos, I'll give you a combo for each CC engagement I use. Keep in mind these are my personal favorites with my playstyle and add-ons. 
Feel free to use them to create your own combos that cater to your play style and add-ons. That about covers everything I find important for both new and experienced console Valkyrie players alike. Again, please be open-minded since these are my opinions and personal experiences that I'd like to share with you. My goal in making this guide was to help people understand and enjoy Valkyrie as much as I do. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. I'll answer your questions as soon as I can. If you're interested in discussing topics like what I covered in my guide and much more, you can also join the Valkyrie Discord. I'll put a link in the description. A lot of useful information can be found there and you can get personal advice on anything Valkyrie related from some highly regarded Valkyries on console or PC. If you'd like, check out my other videos I've made. Share them if you found them helpful or to show support. Last but not least, thank you if you made it this far. Until next time, love you and bye! Thank you.